China is trying to stabilize markets after shares sank to a five-year low in recent chaotic trading. The latest moves add to the piecemeal steps policymakers have taken as they struggle to end a three-year route that's erased some $7 trillion of value and dented confidence in the world's second-largest economy. Do investors lose confidence in the economy since Chinese stocks are under pressure? Let's analyze. According to Bloomberg estimates, the recent sell-off in Chinese and Hong Kong equities has wiped out almost $7 trillion in value since the peak in 2021. According to Chinese state media, Mu Qing, a former chairman of the Shanghai Stock Exchange, will replace Yi Qiuiman as chairman and Communist Party chief of the China Securities Regulatory Commission. China has replaced the head of its securities regulator as public anger over the meltdown in the stock market grows. Wu Qing, a banking veteran and most recently the deputy party secretary of Shanghai, was named as chairman and party secretary of the China Securities Regulatory Commission, replacing Yi Huiman, who assumed the role in January 2019, according to a state news agency Xinhua reported recently. Wu, 59, was also the chairman of the Shanghai Stock Exchange, the largest stock exchange in mainland China between 2016 and 2018. He had previously worked with financial regulators for two decades, including at the CSRC. Chinese stock markets have stabilized after weeks, but they have a dire 2023 and have been the world's worst performer this year. The past one month, about $6.1 trillion in market value had been wiped from the Chinese and Hong Kong stock markets since their recent peaks in February 2021. Tens of thousands of Chinese people have flocked to a social media account of the U.S. Embassy in Beijing to vent their anger and frustration about the stock market after other outlets of protests were closed off. Officials are scrambling to draw a line under the market route. Sassine starts off by explaining current issues with the Chinese economy. The policy has been supportive for the economy, especially from the fiscal side over the past two years. We saw that from an infrastructure perspective and also manufacturing, and that helped a lot, keeping the growth at 5%. But that hasn't been effective in actually bringing consumers back, right? So consumer sentiment continued to be depressed in China, especially after two years of COVID and regulations, which shows some of the internet companies are kind of under the microscope and not hiring as much as they used to. The consumer is still not consuming as they should. Derek Irwin, Emerging Markets Portfolio Manager Old Spring, said, Investors looking out into 2024 and anyone hoped that the Chinese government would come riding to the rescue is reevaluating the right now. Until there is a bigger crisis, the Chinese government may just continue to kind of throw cups of water on the fire instead of something big that they probably need to do. There is a degree of capitulation. At this stage, markets are not being driven necessarily by spreadsheets and calculations, but more on emotion and maybe technical issues. Officials this week impose caps on some brokerages, cross-border total return swaps with clients, limiting a channel that can be used by China-based investors to short Hong Kong stocks, said the people asking not to be identified discussing a private matter. At the same time, some Chinese brokers that use the channel to buy mainland shares for their offshore units were told not to reduce their positions, the people said. China is tightening trading restrictions on domestic institutional investors as well as some offshore units as authorities fight to stem a deepening stock route. Some quantitative hedge funds, meanwhile, were banned from placing sell orders, while others were barred from cutting stock positions in their leveraged market neutral funds. These bets, known as a direct market access strategy, are believed to have amplified the recent sell-off in small-cap stocks, the people added. In a statement, the China Securities Regulatory Commission said it recently discovered multiple cases of stock market manipulation and malicious short-selling. The regulator vowed to act quickly to stop illegal behavior that hinders stable stock market operations and hurts investors. Weak economy data, simmering geopolitical tensions with the US, a worsening property crisis and an opaque crackdown on the financial sector have all weighed on investor sentiment. Margin calls and forced liquidation faced by shareholders are emerging as key pressure points after the latest pledge of support provided few details. Shares rebounded in the recent weeks as the securities regulator said it will take steps to prevent risk stemming from share pledges. The CSI 300 index ended the day at 0.7%, higher than earlier dipping to 2.1%. Gages of small cap shares paired losses but still closed deep in the red. But still closed deep in the red. 
Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index has dropped 9% this year after four consecutive years of losses, while the onshore benchmark CSI 300 Index is down almost 7% and traded near the lowest level since 2019. Measures to limit selling could provide some short-term relief, but may be counterproductive, as investors worry about their ability to exit the market, said Michael Harrison, China's economist at 22V Research in New York. Beijing could carry out large stock purchases, though it will be expensive and it's not clear the issue has become urgent enough for them to do this, he added. The net result is that they may muddle through with stopgap measures and hope that selling runs its course, he said. Chinese stocks with small and medium-sized market capitalizations, which many quaint funds trade on, have been under particular selling pressure lately. The CSI 1000 index of small companies fell 6% recently, entering the seventh consecutive losing session. The latest curbs add to steps taken to limit short selling, in which investors bet on a stock decline. China halted the lending of certain shares for short selling last week. Under the measures, strategic investors aren't allowed to lend out shares during agreed locked-up periods. Bloomberg reported earlier that state-owned Citic Securities Co. had stopped lending stocks to individual investors and raised the requirements for institutional clients after so-called window guidance from regulators. This is very little the CSRC can do to turn the market around, said Neil Wang, managing director for China Research at Evercore ISI in New York, adding the chances are slim they would go as far as banning short selling. The CSRC also pledged to prevent abnormal fluctuations saying it would guide more medium- and long-term funds into the market and crack down on illegal activities, including insider trading. The measures may prove insufficient to convince traders who have been repeatedly disappointed by the government's piecemeal approach to stimulus. Investors are worried about a negative loop, where technical selling pressure triggered by margin calls and snowball derivatives worsen the market's downfall. Meanwhile, Liu Huhu, an academic at a government think tank, was cited by a report as saying that the nation should set up a stock stabilization fund as soon as possible to boost market confidence with an aim to get its size to 10 trillion yuan or more. In a separate statement, the securities regulator said it will guide brokerages to adjust their margin call levels and maintain flexible liquidation lines in an effort to reduce pressure on the stock market and limit forced liquidations. In another sign of how exacerbated some investors have become, Hundreds of thousands have flocked to a social media post from the U.S. Embassy discussing the giraffe preservation to vent their frustrations over the economy and slumping share prices. China's internet users often struggle to find a venue to air grievances about the economy or government performance, without official accounts of state agencies or media, usually either disabling the common function or only showcasing selected feedback. Recently, Central Huxian Investment, the equity arm of China's sovereign wealth fund, said it would step up buying shares. Shortly after the announcement, the CSRC issued a statement saying it firmly supports the Central Huxian Investments in its plans. Mainland Chinese stock markets logged a second straight day of gains. The Shanghai Composite Index ended up 1.4%, while the Shenzhen Component Index jumped 2.9%. The redoubled attempts to rescue Chinese stocks appear to have bought Beijing some more time, but they don't address the underlying challenges the economy faces. Weak demand, deflationary pressures, a crashed real estate sector, and rising trade tensions with the United States. A previous brief period of market calm following soothing words from Beijing was brought to an abrupt end last month when a Hong Kong court ordered Evergrande, the poster child of China's property crisis, to liquidate. This sent investors running for the exits again. Stock markets in China and Hong Kong have slumped to multi-year lows this week as confidence in the world's second biggest economy has evaporated and foreign money has fled, while data showed sputtering growth and deepening real estate malaise. So that's all for today. How's the Chinese stock market plummeting and influencing global capital gains? Comment down your thoughts, hit the like button and subscribe for more.